The Future Sport Podcast is brought to you by 3Advance, developers of sports tech apps that are AI-powered and UX-focused. So if you're looking to create some apps for your startup or your sports biz calls for some artificial or business intelligence, you should check out 3Advance. They're incredible. Go to 3Advance.com. That's the number 3Advance.com. Empire. The world is changing. You know, at EverFi, you know, we created a, a learning platform that organizations get behind and, and try to label it and bring it into communities that they care about. Um, and it can be around topics they care about. Like I mentioned, you know, a couple of the big ones for us, financial wellness and mental wellness. That's John Chapman, co-founder of EverFi, where the issues of today and hopefully a more normal tomorrow are being raised. This is the Future Sport Podcast. I'm Bram Weinstein. John Chapman has been working in the technology realm for over two decades and leads a company that, among its offerings, bridges the access of sports teams to young fans through a series of educational platforms that deal with an array of modern issues. How do children digest the unusual and turbulent 2020? John Chapman hopes he has some answers to that. If there was ever a time to check in on your mental wellness and definitely your financial wellness, it is right now during an unusual period in the history of the world, a global pandemic. So let's welcome in our guest, John Chapman, who is the founder and the president of the Global Partnerships of EverFi, which is a company that he co-founded a little more than a decade ago. They're an international technology company that are driving social change through education, and they're addressing some of the most challenging issues in society. Hey, John, how are you? Thanks for being with us. I'm doing great, Bram. It's good to be with you. Um, I don't think anyone, any of us ever expected this. You guys do work in this type of field of dealing with issues that are imperative to financial and mental well-being, but I, I don't know how you prepare for something like this. Can you kind of just give me an overview of life in general from your point of view? Sure. It's certainly uh, unprecedented times, that's for sure. Um, and, and it's something that uh, I don't think we were, any of us were ready for um, in many ways. As a technology company, though, I think we're probably, um, you know, relatively a little bit uh, more equipped uh, to make the quick pivot um, into the environment we operate in now, both from a company perspective and how we operate on a day-to-day basis. Um, I've definitely uh, become a Google Hangouts and Zoom expert, um, uh, as I know many of my colleagues have been, Uh, but also in terms of, uh, from the perspective of our business, um, you know, the fact that we built a digital learning platform that could be accessed remotely and learner led in the sense that everything we designed within it from a content perspective is really designed to be used in a self-paced way. I think it's actually served us well as we try to continue to accommodate the, um, the, the the community we serve from a learner perspective and some, some, some of the additional customers we work with, um, you know, that the fact that, it's delivered remotely and on a digital platform. It it certainly served us uh, well um, as we've entered into this sort of upside down environment. Have teams, leagues, partners that you have asked for anything specific from you in trying to help educate people about how to deal with what's going on right now? Yes, absolutely. It's really been our, 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 our business in general, you know, at EverFi, you know, we created a, a learning platform that, organizations get behind and, and try to label it and bring it into communities that they care about. Um, and it can be around topics they care about. I know you mentioned, you know, a couple of the big ones for us, financial wellness and mental wellness. Um, you know, our, uh, you know, the, some of our, uh, our best and most uh, uh, supportive customers are, are the professional sports leagues here uh, in North America and actually beyond. We work uh, on a global footprint um, with leagues uh, outside of the U S as well. They certainly come to us. Um, seeking uh, to amplify um, their current partnership with us. Obviously, in a, in a more normal pre, uh, pre-COVID-19 time, um, they were supporting our program, implementing our, our software um, into schools um, as, a, as, a, as a school-wide program. So, for example, um, someone like the National Hockey League has been working with us now for six years to bring 
a, a, a program called Future Goals into classrooms across the U.S. and Canada uh, to use the game of hockey to teach STEM-based concepts and STEM careers concepts. Uh, we do that also with leagues like the NFL around character education, a program called Character Playbook is run the same way, Major League Baseball, a program called Summer Slugger, uh, which gets at summer learning loss for, for younger students, um, a program called Actions Matter we do with Major League Soccer, and then a program called Primary Stars that we work on internationally, with both in the UK and the US with the uh, Premier League. And so those are programs that for many, uh, for us, uh, while they've always been used traditionally, our leagues have come to us uh, in the last several weeks and said, listen, we, we want to be able to provide these remotely to families. We know, uh, you know, and remotely actually to teachers as well. Obviously, both, both the household and the teachers now are out there um, having to execute remote learning plans um, and keep kids engaged, keep kids on track um, and uh, during this time. And I think that, you know, the leagues have asked us to really step up and amplify that work. At the same time, it's also really, um, I think, a value add to those leads because it gives them a chance to engage with their fan audience when they're in unprecedented times of not having, in many cases, some of those leagues I mentioned having their sports on on the on the court or on the ice or on the field. And so uh, this gives them an opportunity to engage and you know keep keep their their brand and their um, you know their 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 part of the community top of mind, and also show that they are, you know. Show, show families what they have been doing uh, before this all started and supporting school. So that's been received really well. Um, and I think uh, we, we've been excited to step up and, and, and uh, accommodate that, you know, bring our, our, our solution more directly into families' living rooms instead of just the traditional way we've been doing it into classrooms. So it's been, been a lot of fun. Uh, um, so you mentioned the engagement piece of it. Obviously, listen, everybody's trying to remain engaged with one another in various ways. And with no sports, clearly they want to stay top of mind with fans when they do eventually come back. Under normal circumstances, do they do they view partnering with you similarly, that this is a way to engage with fans and, and alongside educating families in all of these different things that you're talking about? Yeah, it's a great question. I think that, um, as I mentioned before, what we're doing now is really amplifying what they've already been doing. Um, so they do absolutely look at it. Um, first and foremost, it's the right thing to do. Um, they look at it as something that's a, a way to bring a very use technology, use our technology, use our team here at EverFi as a way to really uh, bring a scaled solution to their clubs. In many ways, leagues are always, um, I've learned very quickly over the last six or seven years, you know, they're always looking for ways in which they can provide a support to those efforts to get into the community. So the fact that we can private label our platforms so every time the program is brought out to a community, it's very much localized. So if the Nashville Predators are bringing a program uh, around future goals or our NHL partnership to Nashville, it's a Predators program. When they're doing it here in D.C., um, it's a CAPS program. When they're doing it, you know, elsewhere, so on and so forth. Um, the leagues are able to, you know, provide that, sort of service to their clubs. And I think that's a key piece of the value to them. Um, and so it's the right thing to do so that they're extending that support to community initiatives they already want to get behind. So that's kind of the right thing to do category. The second one, absolutely, um, is fan engagement. They want to continue to find ways to not only you know engage their fan base by the product on the court or the field or the ice, but they want to do it in ways in which they're doing it in the community. And so this is a unique way to use technology um, to meet kids where they already are, where they tend to be engaged anyway, um, and, 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 and create an alternative form of, of keeping their brand top of mind um, and strong and in and, and community does. But also, more importantly, you know, reach you know, fans that maybe wouldn't not necessarily be drawn to the sport. So in many ways, when we started our partnership, for example, with the, with the NHL, a big emphasis for them was how do we use – you know, this program to really underscore or, or shine a light on a non-traditional hockey market. How do we complement, you know, the ball hockey tournaments that are happening in Tampa Bay with the Lightning with a school program where, we, where we're bringing this, our digital curriculum, plus, you know, visits from players like Alex Kalorn and others to really show there's another way for a student who may not initially have been drawn or a family have been drawn to the Lightning to know about what that club's doing in the community and maybe be drawn to, you know, be intrigued to what that, that they're doing on the ice 
And so it's another way to sort of, it's a, we always call it this mini path to becoming a fan. Yeah. Uh, our program could be one of those paths. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. Like, cause I, listen, I'm of an age where this type of outreach occurred on Saturday mornings during cartoons and right. it was called right. the more, you know, or something like it was a PSA program, but it always was localized. And, you know, you would always end up having right. a couple of athletes from your team and it's not to minimize what you're doing. Clearly what you guys are doing is far superior to that. But it seems to have that that kind of genesis of here's this kind of good feel about what your teams are doing for you and reaching you in the place where they think they they can find you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I've, I think we're probably of similar uh, age, so I I too went through that uh, those same experiences as a as a, as a kid. And uh, yeah, we're trying to build on that. In fact, when we started the company 12 years ago, you know, that was those were those were some of the inspirations. Like, how do we take you know, what has been maybe that kind of traditional either TV or in many cases for our other programs, uh, more of a traditional analog workbook based kind of, you know, sort of uh, t- traditional program. How can we really bring it full force in the 21st century using technology? How can we take, you know, teaching financial literacy and instead of having, you know, just a banker come into the classroom and hand out some workbooks for one day, how can we make that an exciting, interactive experience where we took kids to the floor of the New York Stock Exchange to learn about investing, investing and they were, you know, going into scenario-based situations where they were, you know, destroying their credit score and building it back up. And those are the things we, that really thread through our vision for the company as a whole. Um, and then certainly as we work with the sports leagues, you know, it's been a lot of fun uh, as a sports guy myself, you know, taking the game and using it as a, as a really alternative way to teach in many ways. You know, I'll never forget going up to um, Toronto, obviously the hotbed of hockey and, um, and t- talking to a middle school teacher there who was working with his students on our, our hockey scholar program, which is the name of the curriculum that is part of the, the future goals initiative that we work on with the NHL and the players association. And he said, listen, you know, I struggled so much to teach my kids how to use a protractor how to like figure out, you know, use a physical protractor to, to measure an angle. But we have a lesson within Hockey Scholar where we actually have kids virtually shoot a puck off the board and then take a virtual protractor and measure the angle of the shot. And he's like, this actually brought that concept to life in a way that I just simply couldn't as a teacher. And so those are the moments where, you know, again, we're reaching kids where they are, um, you know, in, in school, but even today, you know, in the situation we're in today, that hopefully that same, you know, kid in Toronto, but also in Tampa Bay and Arizona, are, are also maybe, you know, learning the benefit of as they go through their angles lesson in, you know, sixth or seventh grade, um, they're using this tool to, te- you know, to, to bring those concepts to life while they're working on that, maybe, you know, at home in their living room during their uh, kind of de- executing their remote learning plan. <laughs> John, what's your background? Were, were you intending to be an educator? Well, I originally, um, no. I, I, I sort of um, left. I, I, went, I, I went to a liberal arts college. I went to Bowdoin College up in Maine. And I was, uh, yeah, I, I always tell folks that it's, you know, the best liberal arts. I'm a huge liberal arts education proponent um, because it doesn't necessarily teach you exactly what you want to do. It doesn't put you down a narrow path. It teaches you, you know, how to think how to critically analyze things, how to communicate, how to write, um, how to problem solve. And at the end of the day, those are things that um, I, I, that really, to me, apply to being an entrepreneur. So I did work in education out of undergrad. So I worked for over 10 years at Kaplan um, in, in the education space in a, you know, a number of different operating roles um, in a number of different parts of the country that really cut my teeth there learning how to be a general manager, learning how to apply all those liberal arts skills I learned at Bowdoin. Um, I was an athlete at Bowdoin. I played basketball, so I also had kind of the, the things you learn from being an athlete, being a teammate. Um, and I think, you know, for, for me, uh, as I worked at Kaplan, I certainly was very interested in the education space, but obviously I hadn't been in, hadn't been in, a, in, a, in a traditional way as a teacher. Um, but, I, but I also realized that I had a passion um, for for being an entrepreneur and, and applying some of those skills. And, and so I actually um, reconnected 
uh, with two, uh, ironically, two former uh, friends from Bowdoin, Tom Davidson and, and Ray Martinez. And uh, we, you know, came up with the idea for what EverFi would be to, to use, you know, technology to go out to, to, um, to schools across the country and teach what we call critical skills, um, which, which really are topic areas that get undercovered in the classroom. So there's things like financial literacy, mental wellness, career preparation, um, other other topics like that that kind of circle around the curriculum. They might be a you know a, a class that you take once you know once one semester during high school, but you're not really learning enough to have an impact. And we thought technology could really scale that um, you know teach that impact in a unique way, or, or teach that concept in a unique way so that we could have a bigger impact. And so um, and so we conceived the idea of, of creating that, and then. Really, you know, for us, the secret sauce of our of our business model has been, you know, partnering with um, third parties, be they private sector companies, um, you know, uh, state governments, not for profits, to really fund and license and pay for the license of our technology on behalf of schools and communities they care about, um, so that at the end of the day, the schools didn't have to pay anything, um, because we, you know, if we were going to start an education technology company. We just, you know, we looked around and the traditional model didn't really work. It didn't, it didn't scale because you, you had to go to school board to school board across the country and ask them for, you know, a, a license fee or software. Um, and we just knew we couldn't scale quickly enough. But we knew there was an appetite in the private sector um, to, to, to sort of contribute and almost pay that freight on behalf of schools. And we, and, uh, and, you know, we certainly actualized that with now the, Thousands of partners, including the ones you know, I know we're focusing on today from the sports industry. Yeah, uh, but we have many other partners from from all sorts of uh, industries. Are you working in the esports realm? Um, they have massive audiences. Um, are there partnerships where you're trying to do education and, and using their access to their their audiences? It, it's a great question, and I think we're we're it's something we're we're currently working on. Um, we, um, one of our biggest uh, customers um, with our traditional program in the schools is actually EA Sports. Actually, it's really electronic arts in general, not just EA Sports. Um, and, and they are, you know, they are a big proponent of um, teaching kids about, um, obviously, the technology industry, in particular, the video game industry. And, and, and you know, with, with them, our program is called Play to Learn. And it's really to kind of get kids excited about um, you know, studying STEM so that they can be a game developer. It's a cool profession, but you got to obviously get your chops going in science and math in order to really uh, be able to do that. And so that's the program we do with them today. We've had conversations in our in early, our in conversations now with them and other, you know, the burgeoning esports industry to to do more things alongside that industry that, that does mimic um, our our traditional uh, programs with with you know the the, the terrestrial leagues, uh, the traditional leagues across across the country, and so um, not not a no uh, firm partnerships to point to as of yet, but certainly something we're exploring. You're right; it's really an incredible audience. There's some really cool, innovative new companies I've talked to, um, you know, that are you know coming up and are really much earlier stages than we are today, um, that are really trying to crack the nut. Um, supporting that that growing industry, and we're we're certainly interested in doing so as well. well I'll leave you with this because I think everybody needs it, which is a mental break from everything. And since you are doing a lot of work in that space with a lot of different groups, can you can you get a generally just give the message to young and old people alike how to keep uh, mental wellness in mind as they try to navigate all of this right now? Yeah, I think that in many ways, um, you know, mental mental wellness is certainly a very big. Um, topic area of ours, and um, I think that there are a couple of things I would I would give as advice. One, um, I think in these times you have to, from a from a self perspective, um, you know, find a routine for yourself. Um, and that routine can't just be you know either grinding too hard in one direction or the other, um, so that you kind of burn yourself out. Um, you got to build stuff into that routine that is. You know, a time to get a break, a time to exercise, a time to get just simply get fresh air. Um, and so I think having that routine, and I think we've all developed our version of that, you know, hopefully. Um, but if you haven't, please do. 
um, I think that's that's super important. I think the other thing that I would mention, and it comes directly from, you know, a core part of our, you know, pedagogical approach, if you will, towards towards mental health and mental wellness, um, is be a be a supportive um, friend, be a supportive bystander. If, if you if you know someone who is potentially struggling, or if you've observed signs in the past of that, um, be a good friend of them. Reach out to them. Do a Google Hangout with them. Um, you know, and, and they're all, you know, we all have, you know, friends and colleagues in that situation. Maybe, maybe for different reasons. They may not, it may not be a, a, a mental health reason. It may be someone who's potentially, you know, based on their own condition, they may be immunocompromised. And you know that. And you know they have more restrictions on their situation in this current um, environment. So reach out. Be a friend. Um, that's a big part of what we try to do, again, with our teaching approach to, to mental wellness. A lot of it is, you know, good, effective, healthy bystander intervention, support for a friend. That is such a key uh, to, you know, to, 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 to addressing this. And then also vice versa, you know, if you're going through issues, you know, it may be hard, but, but reach out to someone, you know, just call them up, ask them for help, ask them for some time because it works obviously both ways. John Chapman is one of the co-founders of EverFi. Thanks so much for joining us, John. Appreciate it, Ben. Great, great, great to be with you. One of EverFi's clients is the National Lacrosse League. Their deputy commissioner, Jessica Berman, will join us to talk about modern outreach as they promote their sport. My passion and really the reason I work in sports is social impact. I believe that sports has the power to change the world, and I think that's even more true in a global pandemic. That's next time. As always, the future is now. This is the Future Sport Podcast. I'm Bram Weinstein. The Future Sport Podcast is brought to you by Three Advanced, developers of sports tech apps that are AI powered and UX focused. So if you're looking to create some apps for your startup or your sports biz calls for some artificial or business intelligence, you should check out Three Advance. They're incredible. Go to threeadvance.com. That's the number three advance.com.